Hey, Jean here. Welcome to Leg by Leg. This is the first in a series of talks that Orienteering NZ is going to be doing from now on. We're interested in hearing from some competitors from a recent race and going through their course leg by leg and seeing the challenges they had and the successes, what they did well, what they would do differently a second time. This first time is aimed at red level orienteering. So we're looking at the elite women's course from the recent Hogsback Ultralong. Not all of the leg by leg series will be aimed at elite level competition. And in fact, we hope to do it for all levels of competition and talk to people of all levels of experience and see uh, what challenges they find out on the course and what things we can learn from it. So I hope you enjoy this first uh, installation of Leg by Leg. The guests today are Lizzie Ingham, Imogen Scott and Kayla Fairburn. They are some of our more experienced elite female orienteers and I think they've got some good, good tips to share in this half an hour. So please enjoy and give feedback on what kind of stuff you're keen to hear more of because we will be doing uh, a lot more of these, especially over the next few months as we get a clear picture on what kind of stuff people want to hear. See ya. Hi guys, I'm here with Imogen. Lizzie and Kayla. Can you guys uh, say hi so that the listeners can uh, recognize your voices? Hi everyone, it's Imogen. Um, I'm one of the orienteers uh, running this race. Hi, I'm Kayla. I am also an orienteer. <laughs> hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm also an orienteer that ran this race. <laughs> cool. Thanks guys. So let's get into it leg by leg. Unfortunately, what happened is the GPS has cut off uh, Kayla and uh, Emmy's time from the start. So for the first few legs, we're just looking at those that um, had the GPS running at that time, which is Lizzie, who we've got here, and Georgia and uh, Sarah, who uh, are not here with us. So we'll hear mainly from Lizzie on these first few about how she uh, approached these, these legs at Hogsback Ultralong. So what did you first think when you picked up your map, Lizzie? Um, it was quite a large map, so first orienting it, finding out where I was on the map. But yeah, a little bit of um, looking at the course in general and then folding around the first few controls. Um, it's my first time on the map. Uh, I think most, if not all, of the others have run on it once or twice. Um, so to begin with was just taking it cautiously and getting used to the terrain. What did you first see uh, on this on this first leg that you liked the most as useful features to help you into number one? Oh, so um, straight off, I appreciated the course setters getting our feet wet as soon as we started <laughs> um, with a nice big marsh, and it was um, it's been pretty crisp and cold beforehand, so. Always good to get your feet wet and cold before you uh, get stuck in. Um, but yeah, straight away, um, you got a nice marker there in the tower on top of the hill, yeah. which is directing you straight towards the control. Uh, making sure I've got the right entry point to the forest. And then it's a really big, broad spur. Yeah, this is with. definitely quite concerning. But um, before you got there, how did you know the entry point? Because uh, there's there's uh, a few subtle curves, but nothing too distinct. Yeah, oh, the, the curves and the, the vegetation boundary are right, but there's also um, a couple of trees and a patch of rocky ground, and obviously your compass yeah. leading you in there. Yeah. And um, what about entry into the control? Because there's a lot so, scope for drifting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really thick native uh, manuka stuff in there. Beach, um, actually. I'm sure there's manuka shrub. Awesome. Maybe. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, so, really, well, I had no choice about slowing down because it was so thick and um, falling over trees, but keeping hard on my bearing and keeping my head up. So, making sure that firstly I wasn't falling off the side of the broad spur. Yeah. Um, but keeping the direction. Probably north or south, you can drift. Yeah. yeah. And looking for the clearing. So, mm -hmm. any. You know, lighter patch in the forest. Um, 
which cool. will indicate the clearing. So here we can see Lizzie's leg in green compared to uh, Georgia and Sarah's. So the green shows that uh, she had the, the fastest time. And you can see she's run it fairly straight. So um, I'm sure there was really nothing to avoid on this leg. No reason to, to not go straight. You can't avoid the green. You can't avoid the, um, the terrain at all on this one. It looks like you hit it spot on. Yep. Yeah, no, I spotted the, the clearing and the flag from... It's hard to tell with the scale there, but yep. probably about, I don't know, anywhere between 30, 50 metres away. Okay. Nice. Uh, let's move on to number two. <laughs> so it looks like uh, Sarah has beaten you for number two. She's gone nice and straight, and you didn't quite get it straight. Was that intentional or not? No, so I've, I've got sucked in early on the leg with where the easier vegetation is. Um, and I haven't stayed as high as I need to be, so I've got sucked in right So into were you the, this, this red I'm the nice red here. one going on, along. On, on the east. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the, the, the white area was faster to run, and of course it, it's appealing and you kind of gravitate towards that area. Yeah. So I, I didn't keep my direction um, as close as I should have, and I really got caught up in the green in that valley. Yeah. And it was a fair bit vaguer than I expected as well. Right, so yeah, this, this spur here is, is definitely a, a key feature to use, mm. but were you finding it more broad than expected? I think I just I got caught out too far down the hill, and by the time I hit that spur, I was quite close to the bottom of it, um, probably actually closer to the stream than the GPS even okay, shows. Okay, even it. down here. Yeah, right. so I came out to the stream and followed it up. So the danger here, I'm thinking, is that if you hit the stream and you've lost contact a long way before the stream, you might not know whether you're yep, too far east or too far west on the screen, on, yep. on the stream. Did that cross your mind? Yep, absolutely. Um, so when I saw the stream, obviously the first thought is make sure that I'm about to head the correct way up and down it. So again, check the direction, uh, the orientation of the stream, look left and right for what bends I can see in the stream. Mm -hmm and obviously the clearing that the control is actually in. Yeah, so that's looking at some certainly subtle features of the mm. stream. The, the direction isn't the direction hugely is different, slightly yeah. different though. And also if you were too far to the west, you would see this other clearing. Yes, but when you looked uh, the other way, you'd also yep. see a clearing. You'd see a clearing, so you might not know which one. Yeah. Yep. And of course so I... the bend, do you think the bend would be not? Maybe you could see the uh, bend not, if you were too far west. It's hard to no, see, it's pretty I'm small. Not, not looking at that level of detail, okay. but of course I knew that I'd been too low in the valley. So okay. of course the chances are that I'd yeah. hit the control to the east. Yeah. Or hit the stream to the east. Okay. Let's keep moving on to number three. Um, we'll try to move through these uh, quickly until we catch up with the other girls' GPSs. <laughs> so down the stream, pretty straightforward. You put a jump across the spur at some stage. How did you know when to leave the stream to jump across the spur? Um, well, actually, there was the decision at the control whether I was going to come out oh. to the open. Yeah. Um, yeah, and as a matter of fact, I did that that route. Oh, I nice. think it was actually slower. <laughs> okay. Or maybe I didn't execute it very well. Right. Yeah. So you can see these girls have gone straight. Um, Emmy actually came around through here somewhere. Yeah, kind of skirted the edge. Caleb? Yeah. Um, I went reasonably straight on that one. Yep. With the intention of seeking out these these white patches, or just for the safety of the stream? Um, oh, the white patches for sure. So yep. in the end, I decided the. Um, you're able to if you keep your head up, you can pick nice, nice enough uh, channels through the forest. Um, on the map, the white takes you pretty much all the way. Um, as I say it's. Uh, determining when to come up and over the spur, and then holding your direction until you see the clearing. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, I got slightly caught out with the marsh beforehand, this which guy, yeah. is more open on the ground than it is on the map, but it's not nearly as big as the one with the control in it, so right. I need to keep going. And there was a little kid with his dad at that control, and I was like, right, that kid is doing well, he's yeah. more than seven. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, ten. So four, we've got our first big root choice. Coming up now, um, do we have the other GPSs in? Yeah, I think I was joining them somewhere in the middle, but somewhere maybe, maybe, maybe not, not, not quite straight yet. away. Yep. Was, you can see three people have gone fairly similar 
way, did you consider coming out to the northeast? Yeah, I mean, I thought about it, but you have to gain quite a bit of elevation mm-hmm. only to lose it and go down quite a steep hill. Um, and then you've got a, a disadvan- disadvantage when you cross the stream because from the other direction you can use a track. Um, and just from experience, those stream crossings can be pretty slow if they're direct through the bush. So I thought there was a lot to be gained by going on the track. Uh, so I stayed to the left as well. Pretty much the same route as Lizzie, except I went um, slightly more direct over the hill to... Not not over the very top of the hill, but over to the side. Line. Slightly, Yeah, pretty much there where um, Georgia went. But I took the track crossing the stream like Lizzie. And I think Kayla did... Well, Kayla did pretty yeah, much... I pretty much did exactly the same yeah. route as Lizzie. I just, as soon as I saw that track, I was like... It looks like a bit of me <laughs> instead of bashing through more green, especially after the first three controls in green. I was very excited to experience some track <laughs> running. So, yeah, I thought that was quite a good route. And yeah, Lizzie obviously did a very quick time in there. So, I'm glad <laughs> that I took that same route. No, I mean, when, when I was at three and looking at leg, um, first up, I saw the, the route choice. I guess to the right as we're looking at the screen, um, but like Emmy said, there's a lot of climb, um, a steep descent, and then you've got to work your way through the gully, so I pretty quickly dismissed that one. Um, the next option is the stream that Sarah and Georgia have taken, um, which is good, it's decent, it's pretty straight, but because, again, this is my first time in this area, it's an unknown whether I'm going to get stuck in the green there or if it's going to be pretty fast um, running. And then, yeah, obviously the option I went for is the, the track, which at this stage in the race, it's a safe option. Um, it's going to be, you know, clean, fairly fast running. Um, so whereas I might gain a bit of time going down the stream, um, I could also lose quite a bit, so it's a risk that I don't want to take at this stage of the race. So I yep. stick to the safe option. Uh, I probably could have cut over the hill uh, where Sarah and Georgia and Emmy yeah. have. Let's have a look at that. Mm. This line over here doesn't go over the really high point on the hill. So there's like a nice compromise between taking time, taking the climb and going straight. Was there any particular reason why you decided to go around? It was beautiful, clean running along the edge of the, oh, yep. the vegetation boundary. And again, it saves me those few contours that later on in the, the race, I might well appreciate it. I have to say, yeah, I kind of agree. Having gone straight at that marsh was quite slow and I could, I could actually see Kayla in front of me and I could kind of feel myself losing time to her <laughs> pretty much by being in that marsh. Was Kayla going around? Yeah, yeah, I went the same way as Lizzie, and I had, yeah, took a, took a look at the marsh and was like, oh, looks like a lot of thorny undergrowth through there, and as Lizzie said, like, you can't really tell how good or bad it's going to be, like, it could be alright to go through there, but it's not really worth the risk if it, like, yeah, there's potential to be really thick undergrowth. Those marshes are good and lumpy, and it's very hard to run through them unless you're being very aggressive, mm-hmm. um, and you risk falling on your face multiple times. Number five, fairly straightforward. Not many options here. Yeah, no, not too much to add there. Yeah. Did you feel safe on this leg? Is there any risk at all? Yeah. <laughs> no, I felt, so those cliffs uh, as obvious as anything. Um, the pit at number four, I didn't feel so safe with finding because obviously it's a negative feature and you're coming diagonal downhill to it. Um, so I was looking at the top of the hill to judge how far I'd come along. Um, and trying to, obviously you've got the vegetation around it, but you never know if the vegetation's up to date on the map or not. Yeah, yeah, that's quite contrasting. This is a, a small negative feature, as you said, so it's not standing above the ground, whereas this big hill and the spur pulls the control up. Yeah. And the cliffs are facing you as well, so exactly. really safe. You can attack that quite aggressively. Now the beastie leg. What are your thoughts and when were you planning this leg? 
again. So, <laughs> yeah. well, like, I kind of um, looked at it a bit earlier on, like probably not super early, like towards four, um, something, somewhere around there is when I kind of first looked at it, but definitely coming into five because that was quite a straightforward leg, so it was a good time to solidify the plan but um so using this yeah. space here where it's fairly easy coming yeah and you could even see that a bit in yet. advance yeah so so i pretty quickly decided i didn't want to go over that hill and i just saw the route to the right and um following so the that's, track that's close, um, and just trying to minimize climb and while it goes out to the side a bit it doesn't go that far out and it's just there's a lot uh, of nicer running on that route than uh, a more direct approach. You could go up and over the saddle, um, try and avoid the highest part of the hill and yeah. the big black cliffs. Maybe you avoid a little bit, but that's not the whole thing. There's still a huge, huge amount of climb there. Um, and I don't think it's worth taking on that climb for just going a bit straighter. So, so yeah, I went um, down to the road uh, to the right. Um, and then... Yeah, after that you kind of, um, there was a nice track crossing the river as well, so that made things a bit easier. Um, and then kind of just tried to get up the other side as quickly as possible and into this so kind of open area. Imogen is the yellow on, on this particular one. You can see the codes up here. Lizzie's in green and Kayla's one of the red ones. Are you the, the south red or the, the north red, Kayla? The south Okay, so you guys have gone yeah, all in agreements about which way you um, preferred to take this leg. Uh, are there any safety considerations here as well, similar to um, that previous leg? Yeah, exactly. So it's, um, for me, there's the three options. For us. Well, firstly, quickly dismissed going to the, the north of the hill, far too far. Um, oh, as in like... Oh, that the, that was that. What you mean by the north? Oh well, yeah, that's, that that's where the other track is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's too far. Yeah. Too far. Too far yeah. Yeah. Um, also, so like in the on the way to four, I registered we had a long leg coming up. Um, on the way to five is when I looked at it. Yeah. Um, running into five, you had a really good view of down to the south and where that left hand route twist mm -hmm. takes you. Um, and obviously it's it's a hefty climb to go straight. Um, so in my mind, I wouldn't call it a no-brainer decision, but it was clear-cut in my mind to go around. Um, going straight, it's, I mean, as the, the southern girls have shown, it's, it's a decent possibility. Um, but the risk factor was too high for me. Yeah. I don't know quite what the steepness is like on the other side of that hill. Obviously, there's massive cliffs. Um, so you have to pick where you come over the top of the ridge. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I think, George's one, she's got a bit confused at the top if you go up a bit and worked her way around two of the cliffs. There. Yeah, it looks like she thought she was above this cliff, perhaps, and then headed north. Yep. And actually so, went around those ones. So it's just something minor, but this route has none of those big challenges. So it's secure. This it saves you a little bit. It's a route choice that I know I can pull off yeah. um, safely and without any huge time losses. Mm -hmm. um, so the decision for me came when I got to the river. Um, yep, yeah, so I came down to the river. Oh, this first river? Yep. yep. And then whether to continue up to the, the river junction and yeah. try and get up that strip of white. The strip of white through the forest, yeah. Yep. That's another option that it doesn't look like any of the, the girls no, took. No, I think some of the guys took it. Mm -hmm. Yep, I chose this this uh, route through here, actually. Yep. Um, but again, for me, that's, that's a risk. I don't yep. know what the bush is like in there. Yep. Um, whereas I know that I can get that sharp climb up to the alpine meadow pretty quickly up here yep. um, and then it's just a matter of working way to the track and then the main navigation is coming into the control from those clearings cool yep quite quite a safe entry until um this last part here so maybe i can hear from me and kayla were there any concerns coming into this control there's i think scope for a big oh area yeah here. 
Yeah, I kind of drifted off a little bit. I, I wasn't careful enough with my compass. So I think mine the orange, yeah. So I kind of actually lost time at the end. Um, just be ending up in the green and then getting a bit stuck and then realizing I, where I was that I needed to be in the white. And so mm-hmm. getting out of there. But um, So yeah, let's just um, drill down on that because it looks like you've changed direction here quite suddenly. How did you know? I basically... Well, I, I sort of had a, a bearing in the beginning, but then I'd spent so much time getting through this green and I realized, hang on, uh, I should have come come through this green by now. I should be seeing some white. And if I'm still in green, I'm too far to the okay. right. So I need to change. Okay. So there's some deduction going on. Given that I'm still bashing through this green area, I can't be on this particular line because if I was on this line, I would have hit this white area of open forest and given you hadn't you must have been bashing around in here so yeah cool. side, that was yeah. really good thinking and then you came south and found the white yeah pretty much yeah nice okay let's uh, jump on to leg seven kayla how did you think about this one what were your considerations mm. I... so kayla is um, yes, I took the this, this one or you white. No, I was actually wide. Okay, yep. Around the Kayla's this orange one around to the east. So yeah, I had a look and I don't know. In retrospect, potentially going straight would have been better. But after um, similar to Imogen, I had been bashing around in the green for a bit um, at Control Six and didn't enjoy that, and so I wasn't sure what. The bush would be like going straight and I saw the track mm. option and yeah thought that I'd just go for it especially because the open meadow just um out from the control was like really great to that it was a lovely hill to run down so just boosted Super it down there yeah. and then went up and through um so I'm seeing this theme of, of safety come up in a number of your route choices you've identified uh, yeah. somewhere to go with high confidence and high speed and uh, really grasp those yeah I did, I lost a bit of time coming through, just where right. I just where yeah. I came through the river okay. it was quite green. Um, potentially, yeah. yeah, I think I cut down a bit too early there. Yeah, it looks like there's an opportunity to get some white patches, but yeah, looks like you found the green patch. I just yeah, that was unfortunate, but I've managed to bash through, and once I got up to the big clearing there, then it was fine to nice and safe. Yeah, safe to get going, but just lost a bit of time there. And Emmy, you've taken a straighter route. No, no, I haven't actually. I'm the. You're I'm, sorry, I took the oh, same yeah. as Kayla, oh, and in fact, you. I was super conservative, and you know, stayed on the track as mm. long as possible. Cut straight across. Used the clearings. I used very safe attack mm-hmm. points and and markers on this route. So let's. But Lizzie, see. I think went straight. from there to there, Kayla and and Emmy. So Emmy's done a minute faster just from from the track, taking this what looks to be unnecessarily wide, but she's taken high runnability on the track minimum distance through the dense forest and uh, it's paid off in that, this particular example okay let's go seven to eight and most people taking fairly similar approach using the clearings was that just a, a natural way that the terrain took you or was there a conscious decision to um, spend more time going west as opposed to straight through the white forest there were actually quite a few logs on the ground there, I remember. Um, I was planning to stay more straight, but then I kind of realized that this was quite slow. So I think you can almost see where I changed my mind and decided to get out as quickly mm. as possible. I'm that orange one. Um, and then it was, yeah, faster running in the open. Yeah, sometimes the, it's, it's worth going with the terrain just so you can hold it a higher speed. How did you feel there, Lizzie? Um, well, I think George has executed the leg uh, really well. Yes. So, yeah, I think we've come a bit unnecessarily too far west or directly mm-hmm. under control. It was beautiful beach forest there. So getting really through nice, it, was, hey? it was yeah. amazing. Um, I spent some extra distance getting to number seven because it was so nice. <laughs> um, no, but once you're out in the the field, the, the alpine meadow, then you can have your head up um, and pick off the distinctive tree, I think, was really obvious. Which one? Which distinctive um, tree? <laughs> is it? Down, down. There's this guy here. I imagine that would have well, all stood of them. out. But yeah, well, why not? Just have your head up, up. You can know exactly where you're going. One tree at a time. Yeah. Pull your way in. What about the the entry into this control? Are you feeling pretty safe with this control? High aggression? Uh, yeah. I figured I was always just going to be 
a bit lower than the rock on the hill slope, so it's hitting the, yeah. the river and turning uphill. So hit, so you're intentionally aiming off? Um, it was more just where the terrain led you into it, to be honest. And okay. At that point, you're tired enough that you generally yep. don't climb as high as you should. Yep. Um, cool. I stopped for a drink in the river. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. Again, everyone taking a, a fairly straight straight route for nine. There's nothing here that you see is worth avoiding that could be avoided? Nah, it's uh, working your way out from the, the riverbed. Yep. You're going out to the meadows and um, yeah, picking your way through the, the shortest grass and the nice patches of snow. Yep. And then just in, making sure you enter the forest uh, in the right place. What did you use to ensure that you entered the... Um, so again, those you open into the forest in the right trees. place. Yeah. Cool. So we've got a small tree here and a large, distinctive yeah. tree there, and they sh should be enough. I mean, the, the trees aren't ambiguous when you yeah. when you see it. They're precisely in the right place. And for a pit like that, you know, you've got a nice linear feature before it, um, so I'm not yeah. trying to hit it head on, uh, particularly. But again. I hit it slightly below, turned left, and worked my way. Right, so you can take this with, with fairly high confidence as you come in. You know that you're too far down the hill, and you just have to head head left and head on up. It looks like yeah, everyone's done that a approach, similar yeah. approach. Yep. And you can maintain confidence as opposed to going in there, and if you don't see it, are you too far left or too far right? Particularly because it's in that patch of green, you know so there's going to be more undergrowth. Yeah, so the visibility is lower and the chance of not seeing it is higher. Cool, another one, nine to ten. Do we have uh, some different choices here? Emmy, oh, exciting, we'll get to that. <laughs> so there's a choice to use the track a little bit more than the others. It doesn't look like it's separated people by a huge amount, but there's some considerations. Kayla, what were you thinking about on this day taking something? Yeah. I just Different. sort of stayed quite high as I was coming out of control and it was actually a really clear, nice run through there, fresh snow to run through. Oh, cool. So it was really quick, like I felt like it was actually quite a fast route but I was just a bit slow because I lost some time in the circle because I mean, I'm a bit low. But, so it's fast yeah. because you're running in the open, it's just grass yeah. the whole, almost the whole way through and then even yeah. when you're in the forest you're in yeah. white mostly. So, so yeah, I fast. picked the line of the forest just coming through those clearings and then yeah. once I got to the track I saw that it was really clear running through the forest and I could just keep following along the river yeah. but unfortunately that junction Ooh. wasn't particularly clear I think you've just, missed you've missed this junction yeah. okay. well I I mean Didn't I ran right past it but I think it was just such a marshy area that that specific junction then okay. wasn't particularly obvious um I should have paid more attention to the clearing mm. uh, of the square what about the the choice through here. Lizzie, which green line are you? Uh, I went around the bush. So You're this one through I here. I came out and there was a nice set of footprints going through the snow. Yep. And you can see I've got a little right angle bend in my route where <laughs> Yep, that was literally the second I decided, nah, why yep. go through the forest? Safety again. There's a nah it's a beautiful yep. patch of snow with no footprints oh, in it. And I thought yep. I'm making that snow mine. <laughs> and I frolicked down the snow. Um yep. I didn't actually go along the track because it was muddy. So okay. I, I ran in the grass along the side of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but again, you've got a nice secure entry point to the forest. Uh, to this forest here? Yep. Right. So you're going from this very fast area where you're pushing fairly hard and you're about to go into a risky area. Yep. And you want to give yourself the best chance. So you've sought out this, was it the shape that stood out to you the most? Yeah. Or the trees? It cuts into the trees. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, you're going into this area with obviously a number of uh, water courses, mm -hmm. which were very, I think the first one was, you know, proper running water on the ground, but the one the controls in is actually kind of just a muddy ditch from what I remember. Um, and it goes into the green, so yeah. I did spend a couple of seconds kind of standing still looking around, thinking, you know, I'm in the water course, it's turned a bend, I'm in the green, where's the control? Um, but that just comes down to visibility and then being confident mm. that you know you're in the right place. Um, so don't run off. Just keep your eyes open and you'll, you'll see it. Let's go to 11. Everyone oh, deciding that there wasn't... 
wasn't I much. Mess with loop around them. What's that? Oh, there. Okay. There's no, a... that's still not right. My GPS goes straight oh, over. There the we rock go. Okay, we're getting to find it. Yeah. Okay, so aside from some some sliding around close to the control, everyone has decided that there's one clear way out of here, probably using this big clearing, just getting onto the track. Um, what, what else were you using, Lizzie, um, to, to um, get from the safety of this track here yeah, so to the control? You're climbing the spur, and you got the track going on top of the spur. Yep. Yep. Um, up, yeah, along to the clearing, and then you've got to work your way down off the spur, eyes peeled for the rock, and yep. that's where I went wrong. I just followed those logical steps. Mm. Um, Emmy, sometimes you don't you? find it. Um, yeah. I'm the orange, so I actually overshot it as well. So I kind of aimed off, like I could almost see the clearing, and I, I came down, and I just, I, I don't know, I, I must have gone a bit too far. It almost looks like, um, yeah, I, I just overshot and I knew because I was in the green patch because it got very dense and then I, I had to turn back around. I was looking for the re-entrant, but it wasn't... Um, the, this, this shape here? Yeah, or just well, the, 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 the general, general, general yeah. re-entrant there, but it wasn't quite as obvious as I thought. Yeah, so they've come off this steep part here and then the terrain, um, instead of going on along this steep line, contours shift to the north so this shape here um, should pull people up so they don't kind of overshoot so it doesn't look like people have gone too far there's also the stream to catch uh, I'd catch, say anyone, catch lizzie here i still haven't found the control um where the gps has stopped yeah you still but i it's hard to get... so i got caught out firstly by relaxing you know this is the last kind of Full on control before the finish. Um, I may have looked at my watch and thought, oh, look, I've got, I might beat the estimated yeah. winning time. <laughs> Getting distracted. Um, that, and I think there's a little bit of something odd going on in the map there. Um, so it's a bit more overgrown than the, the map shows. Mm -hmm. um, Highly probable. It's seven years old, I think, yeah. the mapping now. So you would expect maybe some vegetation changes. So what I've done is I've, I've overshot. I thought, right, I've missed on the first pass. I'm going to relocate off the bend in yep. the stream, which is obvious. Um, I've come back around. And from that side, there's a lot of, actually a lot of vegetation between you and yeah. the rocks. Okay. So heading in there would be bingo yep. to try and find it. Eventually, yep. I've looped back around to where mm -hmm. I entered first up. Yep. Um, and then Marisol's come through and led me straight to the control. Okay. So, so yeah, th this is definitely <laughs> definitely a tricky one. There's not uh, something very distinctive to point to to the boulder there. So if you haven't come in at precisely the right angle, then uh, you can see you can lose time quite quickly in a small area. All right, this toughy. No one has gone straight. I think we've learned enough from this terrain so far to... You're, decide you're... <laughs> against that road choice. <laughs> yeah. I think um, unless you're like I said, the southerners are harder. Um, Emily went straight. Oh yeah. I think so. Um, it's, uh, it's down the spur. It's still. I honestly don't. Yeah. Know. It looks quite tough. I think this area here the looks so horrendous grounds. to pass. Oh yeah, you can't go through it. Yeah, but you've either got to go in the green or get too close to these rocks. Yeah. I you guys all seem to agree. It would have been then. great fun to go straight, but <laughs> probably not the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at straight as an option, but with the gorge being out of bounds, like you'd, you'd be going along the river and then have to somehow it takes all the fun out of it. Clamber then. up the hill, yeah. round the cliff, and then back down to get yeah. to the control. So that would have taken quite mm -hmm. a long time compared to the at the end of the race. Room. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. and already quite tired after a long race. So, yeah. mm -hmm. It's a lot of bashing. Yep. So it's up and over the hills. People can see there is a track, track here to follow. When you see a track like this, that's generally heading in the right direction, mm -hmm. but it's quite wiggly. How do you approach that in a race? Um, I honestly take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. um, you can't tell from the map, you know, what state the track is in. Right. Maybe it's really nice running. Maybe it's mm -hmm. muddy as anything. Um, 
and also if that hill is going to be nice to contour around versus um, yeah versus not obviously Keep keeping the, your options open yeah pretty much yeah yeah Kayla and I found uh, contouring that hill at the start was a bit um, a gravelly nice and, and a little bit um, easy to lose your footing so yeah then we kind of moved on to the track after a bit um, but so also cut a few corners this orange orange one here so you, you didn't touch the track at all until uh, later here yeah Same yeah with, with Kayla yeah you guys did join the track there okay so no one really decided to follow the track along so this I imagine the running here was okay it was okay but it, it was quite gravelly but I guess still better than taking the extra climb mm -hmm. probably I think we're all just tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a temptation to avoid some contours, and Lizzie's decided that you would avoid the contours and join into the track uh, at this lower level. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, so good. Could you tell the difference between the, the stony ground and the, the not stony oh, ground? Oh, absolutely. There yep. was like a scree slope. Yep. Pretty much. So you had to tiptoe across the, the scree a bit. A bit slippery? Um, yeah, just be careful. Don't want to end up back in the forest. And here's another another example. Um, do you think it's best to notice that there's an option to cut the corner and then wait until you get to the corner? And if the track's really fast down the track, and if um, there's yeah, left low, sure. if the grass is short, then cut the corner. Yeah, play it by ear. Yeah, don't commit too early. Same here. Yeah, that was probably a bit excessive to cut that corner. That's where I slipped and. Um, See. Sliced my hand open on the uh, Yeah, it was very boggy through the there. undergrowth in here yeah, is the, something the to avoid. The track was pretty grotty, to be honest. Quite muddy as well. Okay. Yeah. And here we go. We've got quite a um, a rough entry on on a steep slope, but a fairly safe entry, I'd say. Do you think this is um, safe? How, how did you approach this with confidence? Perfectly safe, apart from the campfire that was burning right by the street. <laughs> 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 on what this lovely got? patch of grass here. <laughs> I think George Ron um, went straight through it. Oh, yeah. No, it's again just being sensible about where you go on mm. the steep slope. Cool. And we'll head up to this last control. No problems here. No, easy easy navigation up the hill. Taking the road. Any any risks here? It's vague. Um, there was a tape going to the control. Good old white and yellow. Oh, from the little ones. Yeah. Oh, Almost okay. ran past it still. <laughs> yeah, so you actually thought the tape wasn't for us, so I tried to avoid it, and you can see I went wide, which was totally unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> in the yellow. Yeah. And to the finish. Yeah, well, actually, I, I saw how horrible that was, and I did actually check the map to see if the road was an option or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Wow, cool. Sprint finish. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on the course. And thank you for anyone that listened. How was that? Our very first leg by leg. Orange and NZ will have more of these coming up. Thanks to Lizzie, Kayla and Imogen for sparing some time to go through their courses and their thoughts with us. What I found most interesting was their sense of maturity on some of those more decisive route choice legs. We didn't see anyone wanting to be the hero and go straight and take on maximum risk for the, the chance of coming out ahead. Everyone could see where the risks were and were quite, I think, smart to uh, avoid the risks where there was a safer and uh, an option with less unknowns. Uh, in, in future, I think we'll be looking at doing some easier ones, as well as some that were at that level. I do think that was pitched at quite an advanced level. We were skimming over a lot of concepts that uh, we would expect a, I think, confident red level orienteer uh, to be pretty comfortable with because we were moving quite quickly with the way uh, we were jumping from feature to feature and all you could really see was the the pointer and the screen so if you're not really confident then I can see how it could be quite easy to get left behind uh, but don't worry we will have more pitched at uh, easier uh, levels of orienteering uh, in, in the near future so thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next leg by leg